So what's going on guys kids here and welcome back to a brand new video for today I will show you the top 3 best healer builds in new world 2024. So there is a new meta and that's why for each and every single build I will explain what attributes, weapon masteries and even weapon and gear perks you want to have. Then what gems and specific gear you want to use to get out your stats as much damage and healing as possible. Then as well I will show you the best gameplay of me using different weapons so you would know which abilities you want to use first on your enemies, then which on your teammates and much more. So if this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So then moving over to the first build which is the flail and live staff. And these are the attributes you want to have. So no matter from which level you start using this build, you first of all want to get your focus to 200 and then get 100 points in constitution and then continue putting everything else in focus and constitution and then around max level and max gear item score you should have around 100 strength, 350 focus and 150 constitution and lastly for your gear you want to go with the light category and this of course means using every single light equipment with a round shield which is the lightest possible shield in the game. So then taking a closer look at the first weapon which is the flail and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. And if you want to unlock these perks and skills in the most efficient way then just follow the numbers on the screen. So then moving over to the second weapon which is the life staff and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So same thing again if you want to unlock these perks and skills in the most efficient way then just follow the numbers on the screen. But mostly this is up to you as long as you unlock all the same skills and perks at the end game. Ok so now let's go over to the gameplay where I will show you the best way to play this build. So for the first weapon we have the flail and your first Q ability is called the arcane smite and this skill will make your character leap forwards and strike the ground which will do damage in 2.7 meter range while behind ourselves we will leave this hazardous area that will do damage for 6 seconds and weaken the enemy for additional 10%. Then the next skill is called the arcane vortex which will swirl the flail above us and do 4 quick hits that all deal damage in 3 meter range and give us and our allies empower buff for 10%. And then lastly we will be using the arcane eruption which will create an eruption in front of our character dealing damage to the enemies and inflicting 2 stacks of impairment for 6 seconds. So as you can tell we will specifically be using skills that will do very good AOE damage and debuff the enemy at the same time. And then for the second weapon we have the life staff and your first Q ability is called the orb of protection which will shoot a simple orb and grant healing and armor buffs if you hit an ally or do damage if you hit the enemy. Then the R skill is called beacon which will shoot a light projectile that will heal all allies in 3 meter range for 10 seconds. And then finally we have the F skill called the Sacred Ground which will shoot very similar circle shaped healing spell and again it will do even more healing and last for 12 seconds. So as you can tell we usually want to use both of them at the same time then step into the circles and then start fighting or just use them on our teammates. Ok so then let's move over to the rotation and no matter if you're farming mobs in PvE or doing PvP the same principle and rules apply. So then at the beginning of the fight we wanna start with the life staff and keep using auto attacks from the range to hit the enemy. Then when he gets closer we wanna drop our beacon and sacred ground on top of each other so then we step into it while changing to our flare weapon and then from here we keep on using auto attacks while using the arcane vortex and then the rest of our arcane smite and eruption skills. And then if we ever get low HP or we need to heal our allies, we just again switch to the life staff. This playstyle is very simple, so just keep in mind that you are healer first. So you drop your healing spells, then switch to the flare for pure damage and to debuff the enemy. And then you just keep rotating between the weapons depending on what you need and that's about it. So now for my last and final conclusions. This flail and life staff weapon combination right now is one of the best builds in your world. This build will give you high damage, while at the same time giving you the ability to heal yourself and your allies. You can even turn this into a more of a paladin build with a full heavy armor, but it's up to you. I like the ability to dodge the enemy attacks while doing damage close range, or just staying away from the fights and heal my teammates. So then last but not the least for the flail and life staff, you want to use the diamond gem and then for all of your gear use the malachite gem for pvp or then the abyssal ward gem for pve 
and then on your character you want to equip the stalwart heart rune of stone form. And then finally, for consumables and perks, those are your personal preference. I personally for healers would recommend to collect armor with perks, that will improve your healing output and armor. But of course, depending on what you want to do, this will be different for every single player. So then in a quick summary, if you're looking for the best healer flare build in this new world season update, then here you go. So then moving over to the second build, which is the best healer slash paladin tank build. And for the weapons, you want to use the life staff and sword with shield. And then these are the attributes you want to have. So first things first, if you start from level 0, you want to get your focus to 150. And then start building your constitution. And around level 60, you should have 250 focus and 150 constitution. And lastly, for your gear, you want to go with the full heavy armor and you have to use a shield as well. So then moving over to the first weapon, which is the life staff. And these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock this perk and then the first ability called the sacred ground. And then afterwards unlock all these 5 perks. Then now let's go over to the other side and unlock this one perk. And then the second ability called the beacon. And then get these 2 perks. Then lastly unlock the last third ability called the lights embrace. And then get these 2 perks as well. And now from this point you can spend your points in whatever order you like. So then for our second weapon we have the sword. And these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first things first, right off from the start you want to unlock both these two perks and then get the first ability called the leaping strike and then get these two perks. Then from here now let's move over to the other side and unlock the second ability called the shield rush and then get these four perks. Then lastly unlock the last third ability called the defiant stance and then get these two perks. And now from this point you're for free to pick and choose which perks you want to unlock next. Okay so now let's go over to the gameplay where I will show you the best way to play this build. So first of all you are a off tank slash off healer and right now in the current meta this build is used to capture points in wars or just have the main role of standing in front of enemies and them not being able to kill you. So then for the life staff your Q ability is called the sacred ground which you have to point and select the area you want to place it in and then cast it for a split second. Then the R ability is called the lights embrace and it basically works the same way just for a single target and you can heal yourself by holding the control button and activating the spell. And lastly we have the F ability called the beacon which you can just aim and it places a huge circle on the ground. So then for our second weapon we have the sword and the first Q spell is called the leaping strike which basically is a damage ability that makes you leap for 6 meters to the enemy. Then the second ability is called the shield rush and the spell makes your character run very fast for 5 meters. And if you hit the target while running he will get knocked back. And then our third ability is the Defiant Stance, which you can just activate and for the next 8 seconds your resistance is increased. Or even in PvE you can activate the spell and increase your threat level which will make all mobs target you. So then as for the actual way to play this build, it doesn't matter if you play by yourself in open world or in a 50v50 war. Your main mission is to stay alive and be unkillable, while still annoying enemies and helping out your teammates with healing. So the way you want to play it is first of all use the sword and activate the Leaping Strike where the Shield Rush ability abilities whenever you want to attack an enemy and always save your defiant stance ability on when the enemies are about to deal a lot of damage. Then switch to the life staff and if an enemy is further away or running use your auto attacks. And then of course use the beacon and sacred ground ability on grouped up players. And to heal yourself or other single target players activate the lights embrace which you can basically spam every 2-3 seconds. So in my final conclusions for this build, this life staff and sword with shield weapon combination is not meant to do a lot of damage but instead it's built to survive multiple players by yourself and still have the option to help out your teammates and deal decent amount of damage to the enemies. Right now the healing staff in general and heavy armor is broken and it has way too much resistance and healing output capability. So as long as the current meta doesn't change, this is by far the best unkillable tank slash healer build for every single activity in the game. And then last but definitely not least, for your life staff you want to use the diamond gem. Then for your sword use the carnelian gem in PvE and for PvP use the amber gem. And lastly for all of your gear, amulets, rings and everything else use the enix gems. And of course remember in PvE if you're using the taunt gem on your weapon then activate the defiant stance ability and it will increase your threat level even more so you can easily tank all the dungeons and mob farming in general. So in a quick summary, if you're looking for the best build that players won't be able to kill you in then this is the build for you so enjoy. So then moving over to the third build which is the life staff and hatchet. 
And these are the attributes you want to have. So first things first, if you start from level 0, you want to get your focus to 150, and then start building your constitution. And around level 60, you should have 300 focus and 150 constitution. And then, last but not the least, for your gear, you want to go with the medium category. And the best gear setup is to have heavy helmet, heavy chest armor, medium gloves, light pants, and medium boots. So then moving over to the first weapon, which is the hatchet, and these are the weapon mastery you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock the Berserk ability with these two perks. Then afterwards unlock the second ability called the Feral Rush and then get these two perks. Then lastly unlock the last third ability with these two perks and that's it. Now again from this point and onwards you're free to choose in whichever order you want to spend your points. So then let's go over to the second weapon which is the Life Staff and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock the Swan perk and then the first ability called the Sacred Ground. And then afterwards unlock all these three perks. Then now let's go over to the other side and unlock this one perk. And then the second ability called the Beacon and then get these two perks. Then lastly unlock the last third ability called the Light's Embrace and then get these two perks as well. And now from this point you are free to spend your points in whatever order you want. Ok so now let's go over to the gameplay where I'll show you the best way to play this build. And as we already looked into the hatchet weapon we will skip it and go straight for the second weapon which is the live staff. And your Q ability is called the sacred ground which you have to point and select the area you wanna place it in and then cast it for a split second. Then the R ability is called the lights embrace and it basically works the same way just for a single target. And of course you can heal yourself by holding the control button and then activating the spell. And lastly we have the F ability called the beacon which you can just aim and it places another huge healing circle on the ground. So the way you want to attack an enemy is first of all from a distance use your life staff and auto attack the target. Then when you get closer to the enemy or he will get closer to you then switch to the hatchet and activate your berserk mode. And then keep on using auto attacks plus the R and F abilities. And then whenever you get low health switch back to the life staff and place the beacon on the ground and then to heal yourself use the lights embrace ability and don't forget to heal yourself you just have to hold the control button and then activate the spell and it's that simple. I usually prefer to use the beacon ability first and then right after spam the lights embrace spell and when I really need more health I use the sacred ground. So for more damage and attacking you use auto attacks and hatchet and to heal yourself switch back to the life staff and that's it. So then for my last and final conclusions for this build. This hatchet and life staff weapon combination is meant to do a bunch of damage while at the same time having the ability to survive for very long. And right now it is the best build for PvE and especially for leveling. And then last but not the least for the life staff you want to use the diamond gem. Then for your hatchet use the amber gem. And lastly for all of your gear, amulets, rings and everything else use the enix gems. And if you're a new player or beginner and not familiar with how this game works, then basically the hatchet and life staff are two different weapons. One weapon is very good with strength attribute and the other one with focus. But as we mainly have a focus build, by using the amber gem we make the weapon switch from one attribute to another one. So now instead of the hatchet scaling with strength it scales with focus. And by doing this we make this build do even more damage and just in general stronger. And and then on top of all this, like I explained in the previous builds, to find out the best weapon and gear perks watch this video which is titled Which weapon and gear perks are the best for your build? You can find the link in this video's description or scroll through my channel. And in that video I will specifically explain how perks work and which ones are the best for your specific gear slash weapons and much more. So in a quick summary, if you are looking for the best and easiest PvE solo player build which is easy to learn and play then this is the build for you so don't forget to have fun.